and welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm Catherine Lake Hogan, your presenter for the evening. And behind the scenes with me is Christine Woodcock of Genealogy Tours of Scotland. And Christine is going to be helping with the technical aspects of our webinar tonight. And also she'll be moderating our questions. Tonight's presentation is Bullet Journaling for Genealogy. Just a reminder that the presentation, the webinar, the live webinar, and the, the archived recorded webinar is copyrighted by me, Catherine Lake Hogan. And I do ask that you do not record or copy the presentation. It is for private viewing only and is not to be shown at any organization, society, or group meetings. All right, now with that out of the way, we can get started here. Again, tonight's presentation is Bullet Journaling for Genealogy. And you may have seen it on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, or even in the news. Bullet journaling. It has been one of the hottest things in 2016. So let's get started with a poll. And I'm going to ask you, our attendees, do you bullet journal? And we'll get the poll up right here, and everybody can just take a few minutes and vote. Do you bullet journal, yes or no? Well, you know, this is really neat. I can see how many people have already voted. We've got 88% people attending have already voted. If you don't want to vote, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to actually too bad, close Too bad federal elections didn't happen so quickly, Catherine. <laughs> All right, oh, we got to 90%, 90% have voted. Okay, all right, we're gonna close the poll. So 91% of our attendees have, have voted, so thank you so much for that. And it looks like about 15% of our attendees this evening, Chris, um, do currently bullet journal, and 85% don't. So this is make, gonna be something new to a lot of you this evening. And that's great. We're glad you're here to come and explore about it. What are we going to be talking about tonight? We're going to be talking about bullet journaling. Okay, you may be an avid bullet journal, you may not, and this is what we're going to be covering. So what is bullet journaling? What tools do you need for bullet journaling? And then we're going to get into the components of bullet journaling. I know what, what is the nitty gritty for it to be considered bullet journaling. And then we're going to talk about why. Why would you bullet journal? Why are people so crazy about this? And then finally, we're going to take a look at some ideas of how you can use bullet journaling for genealogy. Okay, so what exactly is bullet journaling? Bullet journaling is actually a, just a system of journaling and it's designed to help you become more organized and productive. And the beauty of, be of bullet journaling is that it can be customized to meet your own needs and you can use it the way you want to. The way my bullet journal is it might be different than say Christine's or my friend Mitch. We can, the basic system is basic, and then what you do with it from there is entirely up to you. Bullet journaling was actually developed by a guy named Ryder Carroll, okay? And this is his website, bulletjournal.com. It's on your handout. Take some time and visit his website. It really is the best place to start to get a good feel for what is involved in bullet journaling. He has um, a video on YouTube. I've got that link in there for you on the handout. It's short, it's less than five minutes, but he goes through himself on his video and he talks about how to do the basics of bullet journaling. I'm gonna show you tonight as well what the basics are, and then you can adapt it from there to meet your own needs. So what do you need for bullet journaling? What are the tools that are involved? A notebook. Really, any notebook, honestly. And you don't need to have a special notebook or a special journal unless you want to. Okay, some people like to use planners. It may even just be what you have on hand. The other thing that you're really gonna need is some sort of writing instrument like a pen. And yes, any pen will do. Some people like to have special pens to use when they bullet journal, but it's not necessary. So what do I use? I'm gonna tell you. I use a paper mate, I had to look at it, 
It is, it's right here. It is a paper meat medium point black pen. I think I got it at Staples or Business Depot, I don't know, for years ago. Nothing fancy, but I like black pen, so that's what I use. And that's what you're going to do. Use what you like in your bullet journal. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the notebook, choosing your notebook. Okay, that photo there, honestly, is um, all of my notebooks and journals. <laughs> and I have them scattered all over my desk. And I write lists and ideas and plans and events and information about my ancestors to research. And I've got different information in different notebooks. And I've got lists of things I want to research on archive and webinar presentation ideas. And you can see it's not very organized, is it? And they take up room on my desk. I'm constantly shuffling them around when I want to try and find something, trying to remember which book did I put that information in. And then guess what I do when I can't find a notebook? I jot things down on a sticky note. How many of us do that? Or on a notepad. Okay, I've got notepads all over my desk, and I jot things down. But then again, when I want to go back and find it, it's, it can be difficult. I'm frustrated. I can't find what I'm looking for. So I really don't recommend that system at all. <laughs> it's not organized, and it's not effective. Okay, it's sucking at my time. I'm not organized, and I'm not being productive. Okay, I'm wasting my time. So what if I took all that information that's in those notebooks, on the sticky notes, and on the notepads, and I put them all into a bullet journal? Okay, one notebook that stays with me at all times, how much more productive and organized would I be? So what features should I be looking at in a notebook? So since your notebook journal is something that you're going to be using frequently, and ideally you would be using it every day, you want to consider the construction of your notebook. Soft cover, hard cover, which do you prefer? Okay, how much uh, usage you know, can it withstand? Will you be carrying it in your purse, your bag, your backpack, your briefcase? How much wear and tear will there be on your notebook? And then you also want to look at the binding. What's holding your pages together? So is the binding stapled? Is it glued? Is it uh, a wire spiral bound notebook or thread bound? Okay, and, and the price of your notebook is going to reflect that in, like, with the construction. So a glued notebook is going to be less expensive than a thread-bound notebook. But in this case, usually you are going to be getting what you pay for. A thread-bound notebook, uh, the binding on it is going to be much more durable than something that's glued. The other thing to consider with your notebook is does it stay flat? When you open it, does it lay flat? And that's something also you're going to want to consider too because there's nothing worse than a notebook that's flipping up when you're trying to write in it. So these are all things you want to consider when choosing your notebook. And you might actually have to test drive a few notebooks to find the one that works best for you. And because it comes in all different sizes and shapes, again, you're going to find what works best for you. Another consideration for when you're choosing your notebook is the paper. Now, is the quality of the paper, what is the quality of the paper? You know, will the ink easily bleed through the pages? And do you want blank, ruled, graph paper, or dotted grid pages? And this all makes a difference. Everyone has a preference. Even if you don't think you do, you do. You know, I started my first journal and I use blank pages. I don't like it. And the reason I use blank pages is because I was in a rush. I was so excited about bullet journaling. I didn't really stop to consider what I would like and didn't like. So I just rushed out to the nearest bookstore, picked up a, a journal, and all they had in the colors that I liked was blank pages. I couldn't find one um, in a color that I liked that had the pages that I liked. So I compromised. I got a nice green journal with blank pages, and guess what? I hate it. 
I honestly hate it. Green's not even my favorite color. Um, my second favorite color. Um, but the blank pages I'm finding don't work for me. I'm the kind of person I need some guidelines. Other people like uh, dotted grid or ruled pages. With the ruled pages, I'm the kind of person I'm thinking oh, that's what I'm going to like, and I want the lines to be fairly light on the page. I don't want them coming through too much. A lot of people like the dotted grid. It's really popular. It provides guidelines for drawing lines and shapes without being a ruled page. It's easy to write on. You, you know, you can make your writing nice and neat having those guidelines there. And I think it's probably the most popular choice for bullet journaling. I mean, that's no scientific you know, evidence. It's just my observations from the groups and the information that I've looked at that the dotted grid is the most popular paper uh, people like prefer to use it in their journals. There are all kinds of popular notebooks out there. You know, many of us do want a special notebook for our bullet journaling. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, on the market to choose from. So some of the popular ones are Moleskine or Moleskina. <laughs> um, it's quite popular with bullet journals, journalists because it's somewhat it is it's affordable. Um, Aaron Condren, now this is a new system to me, I did a little bit of research on it, and it's actually a whole system of planners, and it looks like it's pretty involved, but again, it depends on what you want to use your journals for. You know, do you want everything in your bullet journal, or do you want only some things in it, and your projects say in a different book? The field notes, those were the, some of the little ones that you saw in that one photo. I love field notes, oh my gosh. <laughs> I used to subscribe to them. So I have field notes, notebooks all over the place because they're really handy and they're really easy just to slip into a, a pocket in your bag. But their notebooks are soft covered, um, which I don't like. And you know, for being a soft covered notebook, they're pretty sturdy, but I want something a little bit sturdier. Remember the old Franklin planners? They're still popular. And the Loish term, 1917 notebook seems to be really popular with bullet journals and I hope I'm saying that correctly with my Canadian accent. I don't know how to speak German and I've listened on online how to say that uh, name. So the best I think I can say it is a Loish term. Very popular. But ideally the notebook that you want is the one that's going to work best for you. So for me I actually ordered a Leuchtturm 1917 notebook. It arrived last week. I'm pretty excited about it. It's in my favorite color, which is red. So I'm more likely going to use it. What I also liked about this notebook is that it has an index and it has pre-numbered pages. Now you're going to see why as we go through the webinar, um, why this is important to me. Uh, because I'm doing it freehand. Yeah. Can I just interrupt for a second? Uh, sure. We have a question here. Somebody wondering if you could explain what field notes are. Yeah, sure. Field Thanks. notes is a subscription website. They have really neat little notebooks, and they come in all different colors and textures, and they're very affordable. They, I find that they tend to run a little bit on the small size, but Again, you can get them with the dotted grid, you can get it with the graph paper, you can get it with the line paper. Every season, they come out with different colors. So they have like a collection and they name it some new and funky name. But the covers all come in different different colors. So I know like one year, they had like all shades of black and they came out like with a collection of four of them when they arrived. And then they're a really neat company. And, and I, I'm endorsing them because I like them. They're not paying me to, to endorse, you know, to make an endorsement for them. But they throw free stuff in there in your order too. So I've gotten some free pencils, you know, some elastic bands, um, that type of thing. They have you know, a website. I think if you just Google field, field notes, it'll come up. F I E L D field notes. You should be able to find it on Google and take a look at it. They're just a really neat um, company. I really like them. I've never had any problems with them. They strike me as just being, you know, good guys that want to make a quality notebook for people. So that might be something that works for you. I mean, it has worked for me for a long time with the field notes. I, 
you would see them scattered all over my desk. But now I want something that's a little bit more hefty for me and have everything in one in one place. So that's why I'm using the voice term notebook is that again it has an index already pre-labeled index and it has pre-numbered pages so I don't have to go in and do that manually it has an elastic on the outside so it helps to keep it closed this one in particular is hard covered and it has two cloth bookmarks on the inside and then at the back it has a pocket and keep you know any extra notes sticky pads you know stickers any type of thing like that I can keep in the pocket at the back and so this is my aim, this is my goal for 2017, is to use this particular notebook right here for my bullet journal. And um, with having all of these features available, it appealed to me. And I feel like if, you know, having all these features and liking the notebook, I'm going to be more likely to use it and use it on a daily basis. So what are the components of bullet journaling. So the process is actually called rapid logging and that term comes from Ryan Carroll, that's what he talks about on his bulletjournal.com website and it involves using a topic, page numbers, short sentences and bullets. So those are the four characteristics involved in rapid logging. So your topics go at the top corner of the page or you can write a title across the top of the page, and that's a variation, <laughs> my variation on it. Ryan likes to just have it right in the top corner. Assigning a topic or a label to your page is going to help you with entering that into the index. I'm exposing myself here, people, because you, now you get to see what my old green journal used to look like. So this is my index. Nothing fancy. I don't spend a lot of time on um, my journals making it very fancy. That's just me. So here's my index. And what you're going to do is if you have a notebook that doesn't already have a pre-printed index, you're going to want to create one. So you're going to use the first four pages of your notebook, two double page spreads. And then you're going to label the pages at the top with the word index. And then every time you add a new entry to your bullet journal, you're going to add it to the index. And I should actually say every time you add a new topic, not a new entry, but a new topic in your bullet journal, you want to make sure you're going to be adding it to the index so that you can find it later. So if you want to see what's in your notebook, look at your index. And then a tip from the pros is only index what you'll reference later. So you may not want to, ref you know, you may not want to put everything that's in your bullet journal in the index. Only those things that you want to reference later. Now, another way to index your bullet journal is to use colored stickers, and this is this system here is from Midge Frazzle, the highly caffeinated genealogist. And what, uh, what Midge has done is she's colored the stickers and then she folds them over the edge of the page. Now I've also seen people use what's called washi tape. And washi tape is a type of masking tape that you can lift off the page and reposition. Um, so, and it comes in all sorts of really cool, funky colors. You can get them just about anywhere, any sort of crafting place um, will sell the washi tape. And it's so just a different way of indexing your bullet journal. Instead of doing numbers, you're doing it by color. And then you can see here, Midge has used what looks to me like her label maker and she's added the titles and then she's added, she has an index, you can see that third panel, that's her index right there and she's just using the colors to go with the titles, the titles, the topics, okay? And so this might be a way of designing your index that works for you. Every bullet journal should have what's called a future log or a yearly calendar. And this is where you're going to list all your tasks and events that are going to take place in the future. 
Some people call it a future log. That didn't work for me. I happen to call mine a year at a glance. Okay, well that's actually what you're looking at. It's actually six months at a glance. I, again, I took you know two double page spreads and laid it out so that I see six months at a time. And when I started uh, that particular journal, you can see I started in the middle of the year. I didn't wait till the beginning of the year. I started in the middle of the year, July. And if you were to flip the pages over, you would see it would include going into 2017. So usually, it, these pages go right after your index in your bullet journal. So you have your index, and then you're going to have your future log or your yearly calendar. And then what I did here, I just divided each page into three sections, and it gives you six months to look at. It helps you to keep track of upcoming events throughout the year where I haven't planned out the month already. So a good one would be for my year at a glance is I know with Christine that we're doing the Great Canadian Genealogy Summit next October in Halifax. Okay, I don't have my October 17, 2017 month planned out, but I know that an event is going to happen. This is where I would put it. I would put it in my future log or yearly calendar. Okay, and so once you get that laid out, make sure you number your pages and then you're going to add it to your index. Now your bullet journal is going to contain at least a monthly and a daily layout and some people like to also include a weekly layout and that, that depends just on the person. Um, it's whether, you know, it's up to you whether you want to add the weekly layout or not. Okay, so this is a monthly layout I did back in July. And um, so a few days before the beginning of a new month, you're going to want to spend some time planning and writing out your monthly layout. And it doesn't have to be fancy. Again, you're going to use a double page spread. And true bullet journalists are going to write the number of the days of the month down the uh, left hand side of the page, that left page. You're going to number it all the way down. You can see I didn't plan mine out too well. <laughs> And I ended up having to continue on to the right-hand page because yeah, July is a long month. And then bullet, a true bullet journal is what Ryan Carroll suggests is you, on the right side of the page, is where you're going to list all the tasks that you want to accomplish that month. And then before each task, you're, you're going to draw a task bullet. Now, remember what I said about customizing the, customizing the layout to suit your needs? Well, you can see this is what I did. Because when I looked at what Ryan was, uh, Ryan, Ryder, sorry, his name is Ryder, what he was doing and how he laid it his out, it didn't make sense to me. I found, you know, writing those events and those topics right beside the date works better for me. And so I did mine just a little bit differently. I also wrote in goals for the month. What did I want to accomplish during that month of July? The things I was hoping to accomplish, I wrote them right there. And then again, you add your page numbers, and then you add the month into your index. This is a weekly layout. You can see I'm not fancy at all. I mean, I did a little what, a little bit of a, an underline there, you know, um, add a little bit of color with some, some markers, colored pencils, um, or pencil crayons, as we say in Canada. And it's a little bit different than the daily layout. So in this particular layout, I wanted to make sure there was five things I really wanted to get done that week. And so by putting those right at the top of the list of my weekly layout, I could see you. It's right in front of my face. So every time I looked at my week with the daily task, those five things were right, done, uh, were right there. And you'll laugh because <laughs> that cleaning off of my desk, that got migrated a lot. So it's whatever you want to prioritize. Okay. And then... I, again, divided my page um, into sections and added the things that I wanted to accomplish on those particular days. And I usually plan my week out on the Sunday and then add things every day. Okay, your week can go Sunday to Saturday. It can go Monday to Sunday. Again, whatever works for you. And this is a daily layout, and this is my layout for this week, as a matter of fact. You can see that was yesterday and today. It's just your daily layout is the list of all the tasks and events you want to accomplish that day. And it just takes a few minutes, and you can either do it the night before 
or you can do it first thing in the morning. Again, whatever works best for you. By not adding other days in advance, by just doing a daily like this, not doing the whole week, but you know, just doing the daily, you have room to add in other things. So other tasks that might crop up during the day that you have time for, other events. Um, and can also add in notes. So something significant happened that day. You know, you can stick a note in there. Uh, because if you plan to save your journals, it also acts as a diary, right? To keep you know all those special things in there as well. So anything that crops up, you can add it in. And then also by not planning all your monthly layouts or weekly layouts in advance, you leave empty pages available for other things like checklists, project ideas, or brainstorming. Using a pre-printed data planner doesn't allow that because it's not going to have the extra pages. I thought I had it in here, but I don't. In my bullet journal, you know, right after one of the daily layouts, I have my webinar planning ideas and I started planning out ideas for 2017 and I just jot them down and it's right there. I know exactly where it, where it is and again, I add the page numbers and I add it to my index. So the next time I have an idea pop into my head that might be a good webinar or presentation idea, I can just go back into my bullet journal and add it right there. You saw those little ticks, those X's, those little arrows on my, my list. You're probably wondering, what, what, is that all that, what does all that mean? Bullets, symbols, and signifiers. You might want to make a key at the front or the back of your uh, notebook. And you know, right at the front, either inside the cover or that first title page before the index or right at the back of your book. And it will help you to remember what all the symbols and the signifiers are for bullet journaling. So anytime you have a task that you want to write in your bullet journal, it's, it's just a dot a little bullet point, a dot. A circle means an event. A slash through the dot or bullet is when you started that particular task and then X through it means it's completed. A line, a line through the bullet means it's canceled. Now, I don't, you don't see it on there, but if it was just a line without a bullet point, it means it's a note. And then the arrow means you've migrated that task to either the next day or somewhere else in your calendar. So if you, you know, that often happens if you don't have time to complete a task or you've decided you're not going to get it done that day. That's what the migration arrow is for. Um, an X through the circle means you've attended the event. And then the two signifiers are exclamation point for um, something that's urgent or an asterisk for anything that's important. Now, you can modify these any way you want to adapt to your needs. I know some people like using little boxes and then they you know, start to shade in half the box when they've started a task and then they shade in the whole box when they've completed a task. So whatever works for you, whether you use you know, the dots and the circles or whether you use boxes, whatever it is that you're going to be using, set up a key, put it in your notebook, and then just be consistent. Again, if we look at my daily layout, we can see that I actually got quite a few things done this week. And then tonight after the webinar, I'm going to go back and I'll look at my daily layout again. And, you know, just looking at what I've got listed for today, well, yay, I did finish my um, bullet journaling handout because it's, it's up there for you to download the PowerPoint presentation. I did my scans. And what I didn't get done, I probably won't get done today, is that very bottom thing. It says EO gifts, and that's essential oil gifts that I want to be making for the holidays. I probably won't get that done tonight, so I'm going to add that arrow, and that will get migrated either to tomorrow or Thursday. And then, again, I'll go in tonight and I'll start laying out my day for tomorrow. What do I want to get done tomorrow and what's on my calendar? So why do people bullet journal? Why would you want a bullet journal? Well, the big question you need to ask yourself is what do you want to get out of it? For some people, it might be organization. 
do you want to be more organized? So this analog, old-fashioned way of keeping track of things really is an amazing system for keeping organized. And by actually physically writing down your tasks, events, ideas, and plans, your brain is working differently than it is when you're typing things on your, lap uh, your laptop keyboard. You're more likely to remember the things you've written down with pen on paper. And there's a connection between writing by hand and the wine in your brain that helps you to remember things. Productivity. By using a bullet journal to plan your day, your week, your month, your year, you'll be surprised at how much more you get done. You don't have to wonder each day, oh, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing today? What am I supposed to be getting done? Oh, and when is that project due? And why don't I have time to research my own family history? By putting it all in your bullet journal, you'll find that you won't have to ask those questions. You can open up your bullet journal every day and you can say, oh yeah, this is what I've planned for today. And by scheduling in time for my family history, I might actually get to work on my own ancestors. So bullet journaling, you know, all these tasks and events each day helps you to schedule and accomplish a lot. And some notebooks, um, some of the notebooks have perforated pages that are really easy to pull out. And these are great for putting information all in one place. So, you know, your list of medications, you know, health requirements. If you have children, you might want to put information about them in there. Emergency contact numbers, all of that in one place. I know on bulletjournal.com, I just read a story on there about someone who used the bullet journal, all the information about their child, and it looks like the child had special needs, something happened, they had to call EMS in. The mom took the bullet journal, she pulled out those pages that had all the information about her child right on it, and she was able to hand it to the EMS personnel, and they said, this is great, this is the information we need. They were able to call it in to the hospital ahead of time, and you know, expedited their child's care. You know, you may not want to go that far um, in putting all that information in your journal, but you can see it's something that you can do and helping you keep organized and keeping all that information in one place. How many people here like to read books? Yeah, me too. And I always, <laughs> always like, you know, when it comes to time to read a book, like, what book do I want to read? What book do I want to borrow from the library? Well, keeping a list of books, movies, TV shows in your bullet journal will help you organize all that. And so some people like to record the books they've already read, and I've seen some really neat layouts for that. You know, maybe for 2017, I can spend some time designing, you know, those funky little bookshelves. People do them, add the book spines in there for the all the books that they've read. But when I started this, I didn't do it. I just made a list. And you can see, so everyone that I've X, put an X to, those are the ones that I actually read. You can see the Kite Runner, I put an asterisk uh, next to it because I thought that was a really great book and I'd like to read it again. So I know that by having that signifier there, it makes it easy um, you know, for me to remember that. And then the ones you can see just with the dots there, the bullets there, are the ones that I have yet to read. And I suppose I should find some way of putting uh, a list together of things that I've already ordered in from the library because the Underground Railroad book I have ordered from the library and it's ready to be picked up. So that might be another list that I can add um, behind this one of things that I've ordered from the library. Okay, and again, same with your movies, your TV shows, uh, all in one place. Bullet journals are also a great place to keep track of habits like exercise, saving money, paying off debt, making progress on a project, um, and you can graph these and graph your progress throughout the month. I haven't done any of these. You can find them all over the place if you look on you know, Facebook groups. Uh, people have examples on there. Pinterest, Instagram are also great places for finding tracking charts for the bullet journal and what people are tracking and graphing, graphing their progress. And a lot of people like using their bullet journals for doodling, um, artwork, or coloring. For them, it's a creative outlet and a way to relax. I've seen some really fantastic artwork in some of the um, bullet journals that I've seen online. But that's not for everyone, and it might not be for you. And that's okay. 
because that's what's so great about bullet journaling. You can make your journal what you want it to be. So now we're going to take a few minutes here and discuss some ideas of how you can use bullet journaling for genealogy. Now this is um, a layout from my friend Jennifer Alford at her website. She did a blog post about bullet journaling for genealogy and this is one of the spreads that she has in her bullet journal on how she used surnames. And she's taken the surnames in her lineage and she's plotted it out on a double page spread and she's put all those names under the family uh, the given name, sorry, for the people under those surnames. So here it is, all in one spot, easy to find, easy to look at. And so then I took Jen's idea and I did one myself. And I added this to my own bullet journal. When I started my family history, I color-coded all of my surnames. So I know everything that has to do with my lake family is always blue, Rickman's red, George is yellow, Evans is green. And so again, I continued that into uh, this layout here with my family names and I just like this really uh, I really like this idea so thanks Jen if you're watching for that idea it's really neat easy to see the main people in my lineage under those surnames you can see which surname I spend the most time on that's my Rickman line because I've got the most names listed there so I can also look at this and say okay which lines do I need to do more work on because I can see like you know a lot of them I only have three names listed um, so I need to do more work on those family lines so it just makes it really easy I you know when I go to a repository I go to an archive you know what names you know do I want to be looking at if I happen to have time to pop into the public library and I want to look at those directories I can see what names are available really easily by pulling out my bullet journal without having to pull out my laptop or my tablet you know opening up an app or finding my family tree on my phone okay it's right here bullet journals are also a good way to keep track of your lineage research you know if you're applying for sons of the American Revolution daughters of the American Revolution the Mayflower Society the United Empire Loyalist Association of Canada I mean there are a lot of lineage societies out there and they all have different uh, requirements I will, some a little bit different requirements I mean essentially it's all going to be the same because you're tracking your lineage from yourself to that particular ancestor so using a bullet journal just to help you keep track of things and keep things organized is really great you can list your lineage you can keep track of the documents that are needed each lineage society has different requirements as to the number of documents that you're going to need to prove your lineage some are one some are three um, and what the quality of the uh, sources are each again each society has different requirements you can track the documents you already have keep a list of the tasks that you need when you're going to repository wh where you need to go all that can be kept in your bullet journal and then also keeping track of the organization or society's contact information. You know, having all that together in one spot in your bullet journal really makes it easy to work on your lineage uh, application forms. Now this is an ancestor page that Midge Frazzle, again the highly caffeinated genealogist, and she's used this in her journal to track where her ancestor was throughout the years. And she's got a table there and she made a timeline out of the table and she's got the years plotted out there and she's got where and I, I'm gonna guess I haven't asked her and I probably should have asked her I'm, it looks like CD could be city directory and then so she's got short forms she knows what those short forms are um, in her bullet journal for her ancestors she's got all that information right there does this replace a research planner does this replace a research log you know, does this replace a report to yourself? No, it doesn't replace that, okay? It's something that you can use as a tool, you know, to help facilitate those other things and have it in one spot. And I like what she's got here, you know, she's got her short form of the sources, what she's found, and, you know, she's added a photo of her ancestor. She's got, it looks like um, the logo from the company that he worked for, you know, just some interesting, bit of you know decoration on there and then the tape that she has on there that's washi tape 
So, you know, if she wants to lift up that photo, she can do that really easily in off of her bullet uh, journal there with that washi tape. Archives visit. How many times do we go to an archives and we're popping onto the internet to find the same information over and over and over again? Yes, putting in my bullet journal the name of the repository, the contact information, the parking information, where it's located, the hours. You know, the contact person. Maybe you've got a contact person at that particular archives. You know, I know the next time that I go to the Peel Regional Archives, you know, the guy I want to talk to, his name is Kyle. That's who I want to talk to. I'm going to put that in my bullet journal so that I can remember that. Also, what record holdings are there? I know that they have, oh, I have to look it up now because it's not in my bullet journal, but there's a particular group of records at that um, archive, the Peel Regional Archives, that I'm not going to find anywhere else. Okay, I want to put that in my bullet journal so I can remember that. Okay, and then any other details about that archive. So one archive that I visit an awful lot is the Archives of Ontario in North, North York, just outside of, um, well, part of the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. And every time I go to visit the archives, I'm always looking up the information on the internet. So what I did this time is I actually went onto the web page and I jotted all this information down into my bullet journal. And so I've got there, you know, take Chimney Stack Road, because I know when I turn onto that road, it takes me right into where I want to go to find the archives because it's on the York University campus. Okay, that's a pretty big campus. I know that there's a parking lot. I know there's a parking garage. I've got the hours listed there. I know they're closed on statutory holidays. And I know that they've got lockers, a lunchroom, and there's a classroom. And then you can see on the right side, I've listed the things that I want to research when I go there. It never fails. It always seems that every time I go to the Archives of Ontario, there's something I want to, I want to research and I can never remember it is. I haven't written it down. So keeping that ongoing list allows me to have it with me so that the next time I go, I can remember, oh yeah, GS1, real nine. Yeah, you know, I wanted to look at that last month when I was there couldn't remember. Next time I go to the archives, I know that I'm going to be looking at that film because it's in my bullet journal. So I just keep that ongoing list of items for that particular um, archives or repository and then I have it with me. I can also then take that information, those reels of film, the books that I have listed, and I can cross-reference it with an ancestor page that I have in my bullet journal. Okay, so I'm keeping track of who that particular document, that particular microfilm, that particular book, I can cross-reference it to keep track of who is it that I'm researching on that particular film or book. This is another one I've got going on here, the Family History Library in Salt Lake City. I hope to be getting there in February. And so I've just listed all of the films that I cannot, either cannot get into a Family History Center or it's going to cost me a lot of money to order all those court records. See those court records on the on the right uh, hand side there, Middlesex County. I've got a ton of ancestors in Middlesex County. I would like to look at all those films, but it's going to cost me a lot of money. So I may be able to look at even if I looked at three of them. You know, while I'm in Salt Lake City, that's three that I don't have to order in. Okay, again, books, you can see that book, the wills in the Norfolk Land Registry Office. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to find that book here. And they will not, from what I could see on the Family Search website, they will not ship that book. So when I go to the Family History Library, I know that's something that I want to look at. And you can see I've highlighted, I've asterisked, I know that's important. That's what I want to look at. Remember, by now, you should you should learn that bullet journaling is personal. Okay, there's some there's some certain things that you do that make it quote unquote bullet journaling. But the fact of the matter is, if you vary, you know, if you vary from that, you modify it. Who's gonna know? Unless you're showing it to people, they're not gonna know because you want to use it for the how you want to use it. Use it for what you like and the way that you want to use it. No one else has to see it. It can be as fancy or as plain as you like. And then, you know, take what works for you 
and forget the rest. During our time together, we looked at what bullet journaling is, what tools you need for bullet journaling, and what things to consider in choosing the notebook that works for you. We also looked at the basic components of what's involved in bullet journaling. And then we looked at some different ways that you can use bullet journaling for genealogy. And with that, we're going to wrap it up and say thank you. And I will open to some questions now, Chris. Okay, super. So if anybody has questions and they want to uh, put that in the chat box, I can read them off. Catherine, that was fabulous. Before we go any further with the questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait now to get out and get a journal. Uh, was, while, we were, while you were talking, I was looking around and what what other journals I might already have. Um, and you know what? For me, because I take groups uh, to Scotland to do family history, I can just think of a thousand different things that I want to put in there, right? Places I want to exactly. see and archives and what's available where. And yeah, I just I can't wait. So you've really made me excited. Thank you. Um, so welcome. we have a couple. Thank you. Well, a couple of questions. How many yeah. pages do you do you think a notebook needs to be? What's a good size for a notebook? Okay, the ones that I've looked at, um, like the, the green one that you saw in there, the Moleskine, um, that one I think is about 249. Um, the Leuchtturm one that I just ordered in, it's pre-numbered, so handy dandy, I really like that. And this one's also 249. So generally speaking, you know, it depends, it depends on how much, I guess, mileage you want to get out of your journal. It depends too on what you're going to put into it. You know, are you going to use that bullet journal for quote unquote everything? Then you're going to want a decent sized um, journal that's going to have a fair number of pages available. You know, the field note uh, journals, they don't have, I think they run about 50 pages. They're a little bit smaller. But again, if you're using that, say, for a separate pot, uh, you know, a separate project that you're going to bullet journal and not use it for everything, that might work for you as well. So it, again, it depends on what you want to use it for, depends on how much mileage you want to get out of it. But if you want something that's got a bit of heft to it, you know, the Moleskine, the Leuchtturm, um, there's another one I put on the handout that Tammy Osmer Mize uses. I can't remember the name of it. And that one she's got on hers, it's about 300 pages. Which brought us to the next question, which was, would you have a separate journal for genealogy and a separate one for personal information? Again, it's entirely up to you. I know Midge, Midge Frazzle, she does hers separately. She has, she she's the one who has the Erin Condren system that she really likes. The reason she likes it is because it's, it is a little bit separated. You know, she's got her planner for one thing, but then she's got other notebooks that she's going to be using to do her genealogy in. For me, I think what I showed you is all going to be going into one notebook because, you know, you saw my desk. <laughs> <laughs> all those little notebooks everywhere. Okay, I need some space on my desk. Okay, but having that one notebook, so that red notebook, you know, I can pop that into my purse. I can put it into my briefcase. It goes with me. That's what's going to work for me. So again, it's whatever is going to work best for you. And and you know, our favorite term in genealogy. It depends. It depends yeah. on what works for you. <laughs> Too funny. Um, and then we have a comment. Actually, Mitch uh, is actually in the audience, and uh, she says, "Thanks for making me feel famous." <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, so this is interesting. So Robert says, "Why would I want to carry something that large with me on an overflight seas to do genealogy?" So my um, personal answer would be is that I would probably, um, for, since it was specific for a trip for me personally, I would use probably a smaller notebook just for that trip. But again, it's personal choice, right? Yeah, and you know what? There are some people that don't want to use an analog, you know, analog and paper and pen way of doing bullet journaling. You can do it digitally. Um, Evernote. Um, I use OneNote for a lot of things. I, what I really like about OneNote is it's, it is like setting up a, your own little journal, but it's all online. And with OneNote, 
I know I can use it on all of my devices. I can use it on my laptop, my tablet, and my phone, and it syncs. Whatever change I do on one, it syncs with the rest. So that might be a consideration if you're traveling, especially overseas, and you don't want to haul you know, a notebook because it's adding weight to your luggage, you know, is doing something digitally. That might work for you as well. Right. And you know, it's interesting though, because you said that their average are 300, and, no, what are they? 249 pages. But you think, like, I used to take my um, day planner, which yeah. is, you know, and it, it was day at a time, so it was 365, and it fit my purse. <laughs> it fit my purse, so it's probably, well, it sounds like a lot of pages, it probably really isn't in terms of size, right? Just depends on the, the book you But, get. I mean, if you're, if you're traveling overseas, you know, paper adds weight. You know, is it something that you want to take with you? That's something you have to evaluate, you know, for yourself. And so digital options. I need options. to learn that lesson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that by now. Yeah. Uh, so Pam wants to know um, which takes longer, setting up the journal or getting to the point where you're actually using it? Initially, you're going to, I think, initially setting up your journal is probably going to take the longest. You know, some people actually look forward to this time of year. I'm on a couple of the journaling, the bullet journaling groups on Facebook, and I can see people are starting to ramp up towards the end of the year. They're pretty excited for 2017, and they're investing some time in getting their new journals set up for 2017. So, you know, it's one of those things where once you get it set up, you know, the way you want it, then you're not actually going to be spending a whole lot of time, you know, every day working on it. You know, some people are going to spend, you know, time working on it every month because you're going to have your monthly planner. And like I said, it depends on whether or not you're the kind of person that wants to see your week all at once, so you have a weekly layout. Or if it if that's not for you, you don't have to have that. You can just do it day by day. But once you get it set up the way you want it, I think you're going to find that you're not going to be spending oodles of time on your bullet journal unless you want to. You know, some people like you know using it for a creative outlet. You know, like so for instance, that book list you saw mine was pretty basic. I've seen some pretty amazing artistic creative layouts for listing, you know, their books, the books that they've read. They make a bookshelf and the spines and they got the bookends and I'm like, wow, I wish I had talent like that. But or time. They also, yeah, they're using it but they're using it as a form of relaxation. They're using it as a form of de stressing. You know, for me, I get stressed out because mine looks doesn't look so good. <laughs> Um, and then somebody wondered if the red lines uh, in the handout are clickable. They should be. The PDF, if you download, yeah. yeah. So they, I'll take you directly to the website. And then that last page, is those are affiliate links. I have to tell you that. Legally, I have to tell you that, that those are affiliate links. They're just things that I thought that you might like to look at. And if you click on them and you purchase that item, I get a small percentage back from Amazon. Um, that's it. It doesn't cost you any extra about that, but I do have to tell you about that. And then the other, the first four pages, those links there are just going to take you to those particular websites. So I'm not trying to sell you anything on those pages. You know, just on that last page is all the, where it says supplies, that has the affiliate links on that last page. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining me tonight. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about bullet journaling and how you can use it for uh, genealogy. And um, keep in contact with me. There's my email address. There's my Twitter handle and my Facebook page. Um, I post regularly to Twitter and Facebook about upcoming events, and I'll be having some more webinars coming up in January. So with that, I'm going to say happy holidays and good night, and we'll see you in the new year. Thanks, Kathy.